Hello everybody, this is Cujo Sound and I'm Bjorn Jacobson and welcome to another session of Maximus P. This is part 6 and we're going to be start to be digging into how we can actually record stuff and do something in Maximus P. So, let's get to it. To record something in Maximus P, we need some sort of a buffer. We need something to record to, we need something to record with. And we're going to be doing that with the buffer tilde object. This buffer tilde object needs um, a name and it needs a value to indicate what size of buffer we're talking. Like basically, what what is the size of the memory this can allocate? Uh, we're just going to be calling this one recording, and it should be 5,000 milliseconds. So this now generates a fixed buffer in um, in our memory, which is 5,000 milliseconds. Um, and right now there is nothing in it, so. We can create another object here called record tilde. And if we call it recording as well, this will record to this buffer over here. In order to play back what is in a buffer, we need an object called groove tilde. And that also needs to be named recording. Now, this name is actually um, flexible. All these names are flexible. You can always here say read or load or similar it depends on what object you, you're using you can then change the name of this which means that you on the fly can change recordings which will be very interesting and i'll get to that later we're also needing to see what is actually being recorded so we're going to be using the waveform object this waveform object is kind is looks very simple but it's kind of complex as well it has lots of inlets and outlets and it has this really awesome uh, reference file here which should open now Come on, here we go this awesome reference file here which has these really nice features um, this is a picture slider and a couple of other things which are kind of difficult to do manually so this is a great example of how you can open the reference file unlock it and then simply just copy paste this part into your project and you can use that from there once you have opened the waveform you can send a message to it saying set and recording this means that this now displays the 5000 milliseconds that are in this buffer currently there's nothing in it but let's try and record something and let's see how it goes so we should create a new ADC which is a analog to digital converter which means that whatever we speak into our microphone or recording device it'll come out of this one here we also need a toggle to turn on the sound itself like that and we need a oh that's wrong that's a message because I clicked M instead of N and right meter I just clicked M instead that's an automated shortcut for message so once we are here if we turn on our sound and I start talking and you can you can see that the meter is pumping out here so if we send this signal here to our record over here then if you read this inlet what it says it says it takes the signal whatever you want to feed it it says so in the pop-up and the value one starts the recording and the value zero stops the recording which means that if we create a toggle which is only one and zero if we turn this on we should start recording whatever i'm saying let's try out hello i am just saying something into the microphone and voila you see over here in the waveform it's already set to contain this buffer by this name so now we have this recording here let's um let's delete this and recreate it because we need to reload that buffer um, groove tilde something and groove is a very nice object groove takes an inlet here which is called the signal which is a playback increment Playback increment means that you send the value of how, how fast you wanted to read the sample rate constantly to it by a signal called sick tilde. So if you send the value one into sick tilde, it'll send with a multiplier of one the sample rate to this groove object. If that's too complex for you then that's fine but what it does is that if you send the value 1 and your sample rate is 44,100 then it reads this this buffer 
by that sample rate, which also means that if you send the value 0 0.5, it'll read it at half the speed. If you send it at 2, it'll read it at double speed, which means that you can alter the pitch on the fly. Groove tilde also takes a number of inputs of messages here. If we have here, if we say here, loop and dollar one. If you remember correctly, then dollar one is a variable. So instead of having a message saying loop one and a message saying loop two, sending it to this one here, we can just have a loop with dollar one and a toggle, which means that we can turn the loop on and off. And this gets really useful later once we start creating patches that we need to lock and use for something specifically like a live composition or performances or anything like that. It also takes a message called start loop, which means that it'll start the loop from all over, which is nice because if you're not looping and it just plays the file, you need to tell Groove that it needs to start over from reading this. You can also send the message of stop to it, which means that it'll stop immediately. So let's try this out. So if we create a meter, we should be able to see, if we take this down to the meter, and we start the loop, and we send the value 1 to sig. This is what I was saying, and it comes there. We can also start the loop again, start it over. So if we add a DAC, which has two outputs, then we should hear what I recorded before come out. Hello? This is a test of something going on in here. Hello? This is a test of something going on in here. Hello? This is a test of something going on in here. Okay, as you can see, if we turn the loop off, Hello? The control this is a this. test of something going on in here. The loop will stop at the end of the file. Hello? This, this is, is a test, test of something going, going on in here. here. And then it doesn't loop, which is, uh, which is useful. So if we click here again and start the loop again, the loop won't play because we need to activate start loop. Hello? This, this is, is a, a test, test of something, something going, going on in here. And you can also stop it with this. Here comes the interesting part. If we have the loop going on, and instead of just a toggle into sig, we can send a float. We'll just lock the patch and type one. Unlock it. Here, 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 start. Hello? This, this is, is a, a test, test of something, something going, going on in here. here. Hello? This so is a test of something number, going on in here. It'll start playing it back differently. Hello? This, this is, is a, a test, test of something going on in here. Hello? This is a test of something going on in here. Hello? This is a test of something going on in here. So you can make these kind of weird effects. Hello? This is a test of something, something going, going on in here. here. Right. Hello? This, this is, is a, a test, test of something, something going, going on in here. here. Let's just stop this here. So that's how SIG works. If it sends the value 1, it uses the correct uh, multiplication value in terms of the sample rate. It is playing back 1 to 1. If it's 2, then it's of course double the sample rate, which means that you will hear it at double the speed. 0 0.5, it'll be, it'll be at half the speed. It's really useful especially for pitching if you're making some sort of DJ tool. I used to do that when I was playing live. I was um, playing live in Max MSP. Just have these two turntable style things that I had created, which meant that I could bend the pitch up and down, and then just um, a beat mix on this, which meant that I could go out and play live with my nano control here, or I had this um, Nord modular keyboard that I was using, which allowed me to do this, and then only by using... Um, um, the keys on my keyboard, I could DJ on this instead of instead of having to use Traktor or I used to bring my records or something like that, which meant that it became kind of interesting. It also meant that I could press these um, the buttons that we made before in the previous uh, videos, where you could just like turn on effects, ba ba ba, and it was it was really useful. So if we want to know something about what's going on in here, again in the groove and in the buffer, we can create a new object here called info tilde and write the name of the buffer. So here we get all these outlets here, and these outlets here, they, they, they give us certain values once we bang the top inlet here. So if we create a float, 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 like this, this here is the sampling rate, and this here is the instrument sample list, we don't need that, and 
sustain loop, sustain loop end, start, stop, release loop. But here's the total time. And this here is the most recent file name. So, and we can't use that. So go here. And if we bang this, it will give us the information about the sample rate and the total length in milliseconds of this file. And of course, the length of the file will obviously be 5,000 milliseconds because we've set it to that. But if you have a more dynamic uh, playthrough or if, you, if you're loading samples in, then this number will be kind of arbitrary, which is why you, we'll need it in a second. So 44,100, which is our sample rate. And this here is the amount of milliseconds that our file is. The reason why we want to know the total length of the file is because our groove gives us this signal out here which goes from zero to one, um, in t but it comes out as a sound uh, from, from the sound outlet. It goes from zero to one and shows us how far in the playback we are. And in order to read that, because we can make here a number tilde like this. Hello, this is a test of something going on in here. Hello? This, this is, is a, a test, test of, of something, something going, going on in here. here. Yeah, as you can see, it goes from zero to one. Once it reaches one, it starts over because we have the loop on. If we turn the loop off, you'll see. Hello, Hello? This, this is, is a, a test, test of, of something, something going, going on in here. here. And then the file has done its playback, which means that it ends at one. So here, if we create a multiply, we just write one dot because we want it to know that it should multiply with float values. But we're going to override that in a second. So here, number value as a signal, and here, number value as that, as a float value. So we want it to, this is what we want it to multiply with, and we want this value here to multiply with that. So if we just send this value there, and then once we start looping, it should be this value here multiplied by this value here, and it'll give us a float value of the exact millisecond location where in the file we are currently are during our playback. Hello? This, this is, is a, a test, test of, something of something going on in here. Hello? This, this is, is a test, test of something, something going, going on in here. here. Oh, it needs to be the other way around because Hello? This, this value is, is static and this value is the variable. And of course the variable, not of course, but Hello? the variable can this only go into the left inlet. Going on in here. So if we do it the other way around. Hello? This is a test of something going on in here. Here we are. Hello? This there is you a go. Test of something going on in here. So now we know exactly where we are in the playback. Hello? If we this stop the loop. Of something going on in here. At one, we are exactly at the file location of 5,000 milliseconds. This is super useful if you want to create some sort of stutter. You want to know where you are. And let's say you press a button and you want the playback to stop and have a loop that's so that it, instead of me saying blah, 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 suddenly it goes blah, 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 blah at a specific point. You can hit your button and then remember this number where you are, create a loop point there, plus maybe let's say 100 milliseconds, and you can make it go like this. Whenever you let go of the button again, it'll go back to the other playback value. That's a, a nice way to create a stutter. So of course, as we saw before in one of the other, t other videos, these here, ah, these cables here can be made to look a little nicer. So if we press Control Shift Y, they become like more linear like this, which means that we can like this. And we can make things look just a little nicer, a little nicer. You can also uh, click on a cable and say here, root, like that, and then it works. You can also align it, and then it becomes aligned completely like that. So this this can make a patch a little easier to read. It can also make it super complicated to read because you don't know if there are like in this inlet here there are like these three things going into it at the same time. You don't know that three things are going into this inlet because the cables are on top of each other. So be aware of that if you do this. If you need stuff to bang, like this info over here, you want to know something specific, and you have a patch that already preloads a specific buffer or recording or something like that, you can always use the load bang um, object. And this loads whenever you load the patch. 
So if I was to connect this here, and then whenever I started this patch, this would send a bang once the patch was done loading. In one of the previous episodes, we briefly touched upon the random object, and that becomes very useful right now. We're going to try it out and see if we can do something interesting about this signal value right here. So let's... Yeah, this all here. Control shift y Here we are. Control shift y Here and here. And here. We can move this up here. Like that. And this one here as well. Control shift y Things just get to look a little nicer. We can put that over here. Good. Now, if we make a random and say we want it to randomize of a thousand numbers and we which means that we can then say we want a float value here and if we bang it we get a value between zero and one thousand like this and that's a bit of a, a big number but if what if we then say divide by 500 left inlet and out again divided by 500 float then we get this number here which is between 0 and 2 so what if we send this value to our signal here start the loop hello, hello? this is a test of something going on in here hello this is a test of something going on in here so we can randomize this now, hello. If you don't want this to do is this, a test of something going on. And if you don't want to do this manually by clicking this, you can always add the metro, the metro object. And let's just write 500 milliseconds here. Metro takes a bang and then it bangs out every 500 milliseconds. We can actually remove this bang here, go here, and add another bang here. So once I start hitting this bang here, it'll start banging out every 500 milliseconds means that we can then do like this and every 500 milliseconds it'll generate a new value for us hello oh this, this is, is a, a test, test of something going on here. hello that's also nice so if you bang it again nothing happens but that's because this actually takes a toggle so if it's one or a bang it starts banging in the metro in the time scale that we've set but if you set it to zero, it stops, which is also kind of useful to stop your Metro from running all the time. Sure. So what if we want to control these with our nano, uh, capital N, nano control knobs, as you may remember from some of the previous episodes, if we just add, just hit F to create a float, just alter this by turning the first key on my nano control here, the first knob. Sorry, I don't have a recording of this, but um, maybe you can see it here. Just turn this key, this knob here, and then it alters the value between between zero and 127. So that value, 127, that is not very useful because we want something like 1,500 over here. So we're going to be using the new scale object and we want to go from 0 to 127 and we want that value to be relative to between 100 and let's say 1000. So this value here goes in here and then we have a float value here. Let's press F to create a float. Whenever I turn this key, this knob here, then it represents a value between 0 and 1000 instead, um, which is very useful. So if we send that value up here to our say metro in milliseconds then we can alter that we can also send it here to our random number let's try again hello this is a test of <laughs> going on in here right hello so this is a test of something going on in here between this hello this is a <laughs> test of something going on in here hello this is a, a test of so 300 here. milliseconds here. Let's let's drag this down here. Hello? So now it's randomizing. Instead of only banging it, now it's banging it every 255 
milliseconds. It's banging it every every 255 milliseconds, but it's also randomizing between zero and 255, which means that this value now it's only randomizing below one, which means that we will only get slower playbacks than than the original recording. So what if we take this number here and then also say we say we can multiply it by two, two uh, new multiply by two send it there uh, and we go here actually we should change this and say multiply by 0 0.5 Maybe it's zero point one. It can quickly get kind of annoying to listen to, but If we move on and we take a more better look at this waveform object over here, um, it's one of these objects where if you type in waveform tilde, it opens up this imagery thing. So you can't alter it once you have opened it like this. Um, unlike the other objects where you can just double click them and change things like that. Um, it has this really nice reference file. If you alt click and uh, if you alt click it, you get this reference file here and in this reference files, there's a really nice example of that you can have display start, display length, this selection start, selection end, and select all, yes and no. It also has this little picture slider here, which means that you can then alter and select. Like this in the file, you can see how the values here change. The groove object has these inputs over here, which is loop minimum and loop maximum which means that when you select something in your window here, selection start and selection end, these values are sent to over here, which means that you can you can alter your loop like this. If you hold shift, you can alter just one of them. Uh, the closer you are to either, it'll start using that one. So you can actually do like, like this and make some really nasty, nice short loops. Um, let's try that. But this object here, um, it's a little advanced. If you unlock this patch, you'll see a lot of these things going on here. And this picture slider here, and there's also this patch here called VF Keys, um, which I'm not that very familiar with, and it doesn't really matter because you can always take whatever is here. Let's just do that, and then Control C for copy, and over here we can just paste it. Um, because in here, this does what we want, because else we just get this, um, we just get this file here. Uh, which so which shows nothing and we can't really do anything about it but here because here we can't select anything in it uh, but we can over here when we load something into it um, but we need a new recording because I had to close the patch and start all over so let's make a new recording so we turn on our patch start talking and we are talking into the buffer and that should work very nicely so if i am talking and i talk into the buffer we can see that something is happening that's very nice so now we have this recording here we can turn on the sound again and actually here say one hello one. This, this is, is a, a test, test of, of something, something going, going on in here, here. hello this, this is, is a test, test of something, something going, going on in here, here. Hello? This, this is, is a test, test of something, something going, going on in here. Hello? This, this is a test, test of something, something going on in here. Hello? This, this is a test, test of something, something going on in here. Hello? This, this is, is a test, test of something, something going, going on in here. 
So we have recorded this here and nothing is showing over here, but that's because we need to send the message saying set recording because that is the name of the buffer that we created. So if we say here, doot, now we can see it here. If we say that we want this here, this selection start, we can send that to there and the selection end, send that to here. These are the inlets for selection start and stop. If we lock our patch, and start the loop and, and I, I talk, talk into, into the buffer we can and, 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 and I talk into, into the buffer we can see that something is happening <laughs> that Let's turn the loop on to the buffer 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 to the to the buffer we can see that something is happening we can obviously we can obviously um, just alter these by connecting our nano control keys to any of these values and then use it. So if we select this this end part here, and then we have our nano control. Let's let's use key number two. Key number two. This is the knob number two, as you can maybe see here. Turning this here, and the number changes. And we want that to be. New and scale it between 0 and 127. And we want it to be scaled between 0 and $1. And $1, we want to be the size of of the buffer that we got from our something of our info tilde over here it needs to go in here this is the high output value we can always just say 5,000 ourselves here we are so if we send this number here to Anyway, lots of fun to be had with the buffer tilde and the recording and the groove tilde objects. And also the randomization of all these things, especially if you start, if you load basically whatever loop you want, and then you start randomizing between the values of the select start and the select end, and then you can have it skit around the sound file like that. It's very, very interesting. Hopefully you learned something about groove and buffer and recording today. Um, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, please go on facebook.com forward slash Cujo Sound, patreon.com forward slash Cujo Sound, Instagram, Cujo Sound, Twitter, I'm White Noise Trash. For some reason, I use another name there. Um, if you like this page, please follow it. Please subscribe. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and we'll figure something out and we can talk about it. Have a good one.